Hi guys. All right, today is October the 16th. It's Monday in Tugum, Australia. And I thought I'd have some fun bringing to you how much the Australian government cares for us. All right, for everybody over 50, the Australian government sends out once every two years a National Bowel Cancer Screening Program Kit. This is the kit. All right, and there's this lovely letter here addressed to all of us. Dear Janelle, I would like to invite you to take part in the National Bowel Cancer Screening Program, the program, and refer to my previous correspondence in which I advised that a test kit would be sent to you. I do remember throwing something into the garbage bin that, uh, yes, okay. The test kit with instructions and an information booklet is included with this letter. The test is free and doing the test will take just a few minutes at two different times. It is important that you read the information booklet and follow the instructions carefully to maximise the accuracy of your result. The program's pathology laboratory will analyse the samples and if blood is found, known as the positive test result, you will be asked to see your doctor to talk about the result. A positive result does not mean that you have bowel cancer, it just means that blood was detected in your bowel motion and you should see your doctor for further tests to find the cause of the bleeding. Bowel cancer can develop with few, if any, early warning signs. That is why doing this test is so important. However, if you have any of the symptoms detailed in the information booklet, you should see your doctor. Similarly, if you have a significant family history of bowel cancer, you should also talk to your doctor as soon as possible. I hope you choose to take part in this important program. If you do not wish to take part, please fill out the opt-off suspend form at the back of the information booklet or call the program information line on 1800 118 868 during business hours and dispose of your test kit. You should not give your kit to another person if you choose not to participate. If you have any questions about the test kit or the program, please call the program information line or talk to your doctor. Yours sincerely, Professor Chris Bagalay, Chief Medical Officer, October the 3rd, 2012. Okay, now this is the booklet showing of all kinds of elderly looking happy people. Obviously the implication is they're so pleased that the government of Australia cared so much about them that they were able to beat their cancer through radiation or uh, cutting out the cold, whatever, early enough and continue to live happy, healthy lives, although maimed because the Australian government cares so much about them. All right, now I've opened the kit. Let's see what's in there. A couple of plastic tubes. Uh, I don't have to tell you that I won't be doing this kit, um, this, this, this test. And there's a, there's a couple of bags there. Oh, they're exciting. I keep those for other purposes. And we've got uh, uh, labels and other needle looking bits and pieces there. Oh, here's a, uh, here's a prepaid padded bag and instructions, how to collect your samples for testing. So, you know, is everybody really clear on what it is that we're collecting here? Stool sample. Okay, now. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, I just said there will be a, a follow-up video on how to, <laughs> a, a real live how to collect your sample video. Now, I just thought I'd bring you this happy news because it really does demonstrate how much the Australian government cares for the people of Australia, right? You'd think? Okay. Not to mention make a lot of money for, uh, let's see, pathology services. Now test samples to Dorovich Pathology. And then, of course, you've got the sponsor of the new HEM tube. That must have been one of these looking things. Um, Siemens. And then uh, the manufacturer of the new hem to B is Fuji Rebio Inc. 
Okay, so they would be making a shit load of money out of the government sponsored program, wouldn't they, guys? That's right. Now, let's continue with just how much the Australian government cares for us all. I uh, thank you, Tracy. You uh, alerted this to me by posting it on uh, Facebook page. Now, this is, this is from gayahealth.com, and it's all about GM wheat may damage human genetics permanently, brought to you by the Australian government in the form of its science research arm, is joining agribusiness profiteering by designing a GM wheat that could kill people <laughs> who eat it and be inherited by their children. Okay, that's the little byline there. Uh, as we go on, and, and there's this lovely picture of uh, a wheat field and they've photoshopped in, they, they tell this, the smoky skull is superimposed over the Aussie wheat fields. Okay, it's written by somebody called Heidi Stevenson. Good on you, Heidi, for bringing this to the attention of the Australian people who are set about to do their national bowel cancer screening <laughs> experiments. Okay. We have not yet seen the worst damage that genetic engineering may do. Australia's governmental agency, Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, otherwise known as all capital CSIRO, is developing a wheat species that is engineered to turn off genes, that's G-E-N-E-S, permanently. Professor Jack Heinemann of the University of Canterbury's Research Centre for Integrated Research in Biosafety has studied the wheat's potential. Digital Journal reports that he says, Digital Journal, you know, what's, what's a digital journal except that it's a name and does it exist? Here we go. What we found is that the molecules created in this wheat intended to silence wheat genes can match human genes, that's G-E-N-E-S, and through ingestion, these molecules can enter human beings and potentially silence our genes, that's G-E-N-E-S. The findings are absolutely assured. There is no doubt that these matches exist. The implications are clarified by Professor Judy Carman of Flinders University. Flinders would be in Victoria. If this silences the same gene in us that it silences in the wheat, well, children who are born with this enzyme not working tend to die by the age of about five. Silencing the equivalent gene, G-E-N-E, in humans that is silenced in this genetically modified wheat holds the potential of, you guessed it folks, killing people. But it gets worse. Silenced genes are permanently silenced and can be passed down the generations. So, you know, what generations? Hello? Generation number one, silenced. What generations if the children die by the age of five, there are no generations. All brought to you by the Australian government who sponsors your bowel screening so that you can catch it early enough and live, what, another year or two? And by the way, all those who have joined the chain of helping you stay alive for what, another year or two have made a shit load of money. Let's continue with our ripping yarn. This has really got me going today, as you can tell. All right, Dr. Heinemann. The bullshit gets to make as well, don't What's that? You're making up a bullshit bit. Well, well, this can be the, the, the bullshit video response to the shit screening kit brought to you, brought to you by the Australian <laughs> government. Julia Gillard, are you listening? Is that, uh, what about, who, who, is, who is the health minister? What fuckwit is the health minister in Australia at the moment? Who, who, what genius have we got there? By the way, folks, if you haven't already clued in, cancer is a fungus. And if you raise the pH level of your body, the fungus will go away. Doesn't matter what cancer you have, 
doesn't matter where it is in your body, if you raise the pH level of your body, that cancer will disappear. However, let's move along in this ripping yarn. Dr. Heinemann was asked to provide his opinion of CSIRO's genetic engineering on wheat plants and produce the report Evaluation of Risks from the Creation of Novel RNA Molecules in Genetically Engineered Wheat Plants and Recommendations for Risk Assessment. He discusses the nature of the genetic entities that are being played with and explains how they can affect human health. RNA is similar to DNA, which is the molecule that carries genetic inheritance. There are several types of RNA, but a particular group called double-stranded RNA, that would be small ds, capital RNA, is of concern. Heinemann writes, ds and RNAs are remarkably stable in the environment. Insects and worms that feed on plants that make ds RNA take in the ds RNA through their digestive system, where it remains intact. He delineates research documenting that once DS RNA is taken through an animal skin or digestive tract, it can wreak havoc. It circulates throughout the body and has been known to be amplified or cause a secondary reaction that leads to more and different DS RNAs, secondary DS RNAs with unpredictable targets. Heinemann points out that a silencing effect on a gene once initiated can be inherited. Though it's known to happen, little is yet known about the process. So it goes on to describe the link between the molecule in the wheat and then the same that matches with its human counterpart. <sighs> and oh, there's a mention of Monsanto here. In fact, employees from the world's largest GM company, Monsanto, have written at least one paper about how to commercially exploit the fact that DSRNA survives digestion in insects. It's their attempt to try to control insect pests of plant, so they would have you believe. That is, the plant is genetically engineered to produce a DSRNA, which insects ingest when they eat the plant. The DSRNA survives digestion in the insect and then silences genes in the insect to stunt its growth and kill it. And then it goes on to say, there can be no question that DSRNA can be transferred to humans by eating. Okay, it goes on to describe the risks. And then Judy Carmen states succinctly, as a result, there is a chain of evidence to show that there is a risk that the DSRNA from this GM wheat may survive digestion, enter the tissues of people that eat it, and silence a gene or genes that G-E-N-E-S in those people. There is also evidence that any genetic changes so produced may be stable and become established in cells of an organ. Furthermore, there is a possibility that these changes may be passed on to future generations. Okay, it goes on to describe the SEI from the plant and the GBE from the human are a perfect match. Bingo! We have a match. All right, lack of adequate risk assessment from Judy. And she is very concerned that the oversight agency, get a load of this, the Office of the Gene Technology Regulator, OGTR, and CSIRO appear not to be looking for any adverse effects in people, but intend to go directly to look for any benefits, she concludes. The Australian government appears to be coming to have to become nothing more than another agribusiness corporate entity. They're using the people's money to fund a massive profit-making venture in genetic engineering without any consideration for the potential harm that may be done to either the environment or the welfare of the people. Not only are they willing to risk mass, mass deaths from these products they're hoping to put on the market, they also seem to have no concern for whether they might be doing permanent damage to generations that follow. That is Judy Carmen's assessment. However, today we have proven that the Australian government really does care for each one of us because we've all received our National Bowel Cancer Screening Program Kit. And of course, 
It hasn't profited anybody, has it, except Darovich pathologies, Siemens, and Future Rebio Inc. Big Pharma. Where does the wheat take food to? Where does what? Oh, well, our, our, our wheat gets exported all around the globe, of course, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, I just couldn't help but uh, bring you the um, sham of our present government. And, of course, it goes without question, the sham of every Western nation government. There's only one righteous government on this planet, and that would be the government of Iran. What a load of shit. <laughs>